The Hang Seng or the Hong Kong stocks, they are uh, down almost 2%, more than 2% that is. We took a bet on electric vehicles where uh, there was absolutely no readiness of the market. Now, on the upside, we need to close above the 20-day moving average on the Nifty, which now stands at 19,657. So For Mutut Finance, the gold portfolio is shining this time around. AM growth on a YY basis at 19.3% is perhaps one of the best in last eight quarters. So Naika, you know, uh, steady performance coming in for their beauty and personal care business. Bell goes and the Nifty opens at 19,380, a cut of nearly 50 points. We'd be most comfortable with the large caps, uh, followed by the mid caps. Yeah. I think the company is well poised to reach a bit of break even in quarter four. 19,257 was the intraday low and from that we've managed to rebound about 50 to 60 points. The July WPI print and it's come in at minus 1.36. Uh, SEBI now seeking a 15-day extension. Uh, bear in mind that, September, that August 29th is anyways the date uh, that the Supreme Court is scheduled to hear this matter. Ultimately, it is access to finance which transforms lives. For the markets, uh, it is down 50 points. The 19,379 is the mark. Well, that was the day so far. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of uh, Closing Bell. We are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Motor Roosevelt Studios. Uh, and, uh, I mean, you've been saying this all day, but I don't think uh, we can say it enough. Wishing all of you a very, very happy Independence Day. I'm Prashant with me. My colleagues Reema and Surabhi Nigel joins us in just a bit from now. Guys, hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Not so bad. I mean, the way today started off on a very gloomy note, I'd say, from a bull's perspective. As you're getting ready for Independence Day, I think it's looking better. The idea of India, at least the way the Lal Street is shaping up right now. It is. I mean, it's looking uh, much better as compared to the morning. Uh, it was looking a bit, a bit washed out, right? I mean, uh, early on, we were down 150-odd points, but I think we're now almost in the green. Are we there? I think we will be there. Uh, so, a five-point, five-and-a-half-odd point change. It's a massive recovery from the day's low, which was, by the way, right after open. Uh, so, all, all day today, we've kind of spent recovering and coming back up. Uh, so, that's great news. You know, we were highlighting how uh, that uh, the fact that there are lots of supports between 19,300 and 19,400. There is an important 61.8% retracement. There are Bullinger bands, uh, and there are some moving averages as well. So, uh, and we put out one number, which was 19,350 or so, which was the 40-day uh, exponential moving average. Uh, so, and, and that was to be used as a bit of a close uh, stop uh, on close. Uh, so we are well above it. We are above 19,400 after falling below 19,300 early on. Bank Nifty is also coming up, by the way. Bank Nifty, though, recovery is a little weaker, uh, but uh, that is also coming up. That has been the weaker part of the market, uh, really. Even on Friday, if you remember, uh, HDFC and ICICI Bank contributed to about 40 index points of the you know 100-point cut that we saw on uh, that day. Mid-caps and small caps, well, they are, I think, down, but uh, losses uh, have been cut by some 60-70%, actually. Uh, more than half uh, from uh, where they were early on in the session. So it's not a bad session at all uh, at this point. And I think as we begin the last hour, any, any second, any minute now, we come back into the green. Rima. Hi. So, you know, there are two key contributors to this intraday recovery of nearly 180, 190 points. One of them has been Reliance Industries. Uh, that heavyweight is actually doing quite smartly. It's up 1.1%. And the sector is IT. The Nifty IT index has recovered smartly from the day's low and is currently up close to about a half a percent. So these two are actually helping the markets recover all their losses. Pull up LTI Mind Tree in the IT pack. Uh, you've got an Infosys, which has gained close to about 1.3 odd percent, thereabout. So IT is one pocket of strength. Uh, this recovery that we are seeing has also been a bit global in nature. So Asian markets at one point of time were exceedingly weak. Hang Seng was down nearly 500 points, but it's closing with a cut of 300 points. So Hang Seng has recovered close to about 200 points from the day's low. The Chinese markets recovered 1% from their session lows. And Europe too, at least the early rates, so the CAC and the DAX are currently in the green with those key indices up marginally, fractionally, but at least there is a green tick on them. Oh, absolutely, and uh, count in U.S. futures as well, because for what it's worth, Wall Street futures right now are suggesting that we'll have a positive start. And uh, tie this in with the way the dollar has behaved. The dollar index today had touched the 103 mark, by the way, but then it's also cooled off very, very rapidly. It's about a you know 102.8 last I checked. 
So uh, some cooling off on the DXY is kind of helping aid equity sentiment for what it's worth. On the mid-cap screen, I'd just like to add over here that today's session was uh, quite different from what we've seen so far because the day was marked by a lot of mid-cap underperformance. Now that is uh, that's sort of improving as we speak. Let's see if it can get if it can get better in the last hour. Even now. Uh, the crisscross lines are really, I mean, the reds are really outpowering the greens. I'm talking about the advanced decline uh, situation where you've got uh, over 1,800 declining stocks, just about 1,000 advancing. The gap is trying to narrow a little bit. Just some interesting examples. I mean, today, if you talk about the weakness, then there are lots of names. I mean, there's Nika, there is, uh, you know, stocks like Lux, Rupa, some of them, are, of course, on earnings, uh, City Union Bank. By the way, the, the news splash on Canfin Homes is important because at least it seems to suggest that there's a ring fencing around this uh, this fraud issue that was reported in the quarter gone by. And the bank is saying that there is uh, no other uh, sort of spillover in any other branch and no further perhaps, uh, you know, provisions or uh, any sort of a uh, one-time charge would be required for it. So there's some relief on that stock that's playing out. But other than that, we've had uh, sharp reactions. When Nike, as I mentioned, is down 7, 7.5%. Uh, City Union Bank, Muthut Finance, uh, these are numbers on the way down. But then you have a garden reach, uh, shipbuilders, market has really liked what it's heard from the company this quarter, 12%, 13% on that stock. SpiceJet has turned profitable in the first quarter. They've, uh, you know, they've put out a good show and that stock is up about 8 9%. PVR, Inox, those of us who have been to the theatres over the weekend would know why that stock is up 5%. So there's a, there's a fair amount of green as well as we get set for the last hour. Nigel, how does it look to you? Well, uh, good, uh, Surbhi. Actually, you know, when you see that sort of recovery from the day's low, obviously, uh, it's pretty good news, right? We almost moved into the green, by the way. So, uh, interesting to see how the last 60 minutes pans out because for those who have bought earlier today, they'll be wondering whether or not to book out. You don't know what happens. We're shut tomorrow. So, let's see how that uh, moves. But for the time being, some recovery from the lows is what we have seen. The big question is, how do you position yourself for this interesting? Final 60 minutes of trade. Mitesh Tucker is back with us. Uh, Mitesh, well, uh, the bulls will feel good. You know, because uh, it's quite a good recovery and the Nifty Bank as well has cut its losses. What levels are you looking at and both these two? So, uh, good afternoon, Nigel. Uh, we were in fact looking at possibly a test of 19,200 to 40 zones. We got a low, I think very close to that, uh, 19,257. And uh, somewhere during the day, we did exit the put options positions on the index. I think the index may not give you much declines from here. 19,200, I still believe, will be a very formidable support. So trading has to be more stock specific, but the directional bias hasn't changed to an uptrend. So I think this will be a bounce back from that support or near the support area. And uh, at the higher levels around 19,650, 700, we'll again see supply. So my sense is that we are getting into a broader range, which could last for uh, two to three weeks and try to buy closer to about 19,250 and try to sell closer to about 19,650. So that's the way we'll approach the markets. For the time being, we are out of put options positions. And on the stock side, I have a buy on uh, LTI Mine Tree. I think uh, the stock was covered. Buy here with a stop at 5130 for targets of uh, 5300. And also a buy on Reliance. That's added a lot of weight to the index today. So Reliance is a buy with a stop uh, below levels of 2545 for targets of 2630. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Well, uh, thanks uh, very much, uh, Mitesh. Appreciate you uh, joining in with that. And uh, uh, good to get that view. Gurmeet Chadda is now joining us. He's Managing Partner and Chief Investment Officer at Complete Circle Consultants. Gurmeet, good to have you with us here. Thank you for your time. You know, we were just, Surabhi was mentioning PVR Inox. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing that, uh, you know, sequel together. And we were talking about it in the morning. Uh, the first one came out in 2001. Seems like uh, ages ago, right? And uh, the second one is a bigger blockbuster. Seems like it. It started on a very strong note. Uh, what, what do you make of, uh, I, mean, I don't know if you've seen the movie, give us a short review. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, P, what do you make of PVR Inox and its prospects for it? It's having a decent run. Oh, oh, more than uh, decent, Prashant. So if you see, uh, it started with MI7 and then you had Oppenheimer and Babi and now with uh, Gadar, Oh My God and Jira. Uh So I think people are coming back. I think the larger concern that the stock had was this OTT versus you know, people going out on the cinema halls and spending that much money, uh, you know, uh, to, to take that experience. I think a lot of that has been dispelled. And that's why, if you see, it's almost up 20, 25% in, in almost a month. Uh, forget about the current move because because of the latest one. So I think what we need to probably see is how, so, you know, the last quarter was soft because the ticketing revenues, uh, uh, although went up, but the FNB revenue was 
was quite soft. A uh, couple of large uh, box office names did not do well. Uh, but I think now the synergy benefits are also playing out. Uh, so with higher occupancy, uh, average ticket price now I think should cross 250. Uh, even the average FMB spend should improve from 130 levels. I think that's where they make more money. Uh, uh, and uh, so I think it's a, you have to be probably it's a bit of a momentum play. Some run up has happened. Uh, so probably can be a little tactical here. And there's a good pipeline also. There is Javan. Uh, uh, there and and there a good good releases there. Also, some of the low budget ones, some of the regional ones, Punjabi ones, etc., are also managing to put up a nice 80, 100 crore kind of a uh, bio collection. So I think I think a good it's a, it's a good outgoing out of home consumption. Or only the hotel space was probably doing well. I think probably now even the multiplexes uh, should catch up. Gurmeet, you're quite up to date with, uh, you know, the kind of releases also that are lined up. But uh, do stay with us because today is the first death anniversary of the veteran Rakesh Junjunwala, the big bull as the world knows him. We put the focus on his top holdings and the alpha that it has generated in the last one year. Nimesh is here with the details. Nimesh. Uh, thanks, Nimesh. As you rightly pointed out, you know, 14th August is the first uh, death anniversary of ace investor Rakesh Junjunwala, fondly known as, you know, uh, we all refer to him as a big bull of the Indian market. He had such deep convictions that this is India's era and that the mother of all bull runs was ahead of us. And actually, you know, all of his uh, sayings has turned so right, right? In the last one year or so, we are hitting new highs. So, uh, you know, I thought let's just revisit the top holdings of Rakesh and what has been the key, you know, key, uh, key top holdings there. So, if you look at his total investments in the, in the listed space, I'm just looking at the listed investments. That is worth close to 37,500 crores as of yesterday's closing. Now, uh, in the last one year, not much has uh, changed. Or, uh, there has not been a big churn, except for one stock where the family sold 5%, that is Rallys India, where they sold 5% stake to Tata Chemicals and raised close to 208 crores. So, that was only one big Change. Now, look at the top holdings of Rakesh. Of course, the top of the list is Aptek, where he owns close to 44... The, uh, the family owns close to 44% stake. Star Health is the second big name, where they own close to 17%. NCC is, uh, is a stock where they own 13%. Nazara Technologies is one name, where he owns close to 10% stake in the company. Metro Brands is one name, where he owns close to 9% Jujit Financials is, is, is in the financial names where he owns close to uh, 8 percent stake. Also, the likes of uh, Viatek, Verberg, Rallys India, I just spoke about where he sold 5 percent. And the likes of Jubilee, uh, uh, Jubilee Farm Nova, Chrysal, and, and Titan, and other names where he owns close to 5 percent stake. So, that's been the large holdings of, 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 uh, of RJ. I've just looked at uh, holdings which are more than 5 percent. Of course, there is a long list of other names as well. You own small stake. But if you look at, you know, while he's no, he's no more now, but if you look at his legacy, Clearly, it shows up that he had such a you know, good midas touch when it comes to the equity investments. In the last one year, a lot of his holdings have done really well, up between 25% to 140%. If you look at the biggest gain, uh, gainer in the last one year from his holding, the top gainer is NCC. That's up 140%. Uh, something like a Viatek, uh, uh, Vobag is up close to 108%. Aptek has rallied nearly 90% uh, from his portfolio as well. So that's been the, that's been the key holdings. But... Uh, you know, if you look at even the, the Tata Group stocks where he had such a large, you know, positions and here he was so bullish on that group itself. Tata communication with the, within the Tata Group stock has rallied close to 55%, more than 50%, so to speak. Indian Hotels has also rallied close to 45%. And there is uh, Tata Motors, which has rallied close to 28% in the last one year. But just to add a word on Tata Motors, you know, this is one stock I have also personally spoken to him many years back when nobody had a conviction. He said, Nimbus, this is a stock to watch. And since his buying... I think the stock is up almost six times he had bought. He was the first to buy 60, 70, 80 rupees. And now it's take, trading at close to 600 rupees. So that's been the kind of legacy he's left with. There are some stocks, there are only a few of them, who have given negative returns as well. So look at the, look at the stocks. Of course, Rally says the family has sold out close to 5%. But Star Health and uh, Jubilant uh, uh, Engraver, these are the two names where uh, you know, uh, the stocks are down 10 or percent in the last one year. But uh, speaking about legacy, speaking about the fact that he was one of the Biggest bull for the Indian markets. His, his portfolio is very much intact. And many of his portfolio stocks in the last one year itself has rallied between uh, almost 25 to 140 percent. And just one stock, Titan, is about 38 percent of the overall portfolio. The portfolio size is 37,500 crore. Of that, about 14,000, 15,000 is courtesy just one uh, Titan. And the holding that he's had in Titan for the last so many decades now. But Nimesh, thank you very much. This is very helpful data. And it's good, you know, it's good for us to jog our memories, right? 
uh, it gives us a lot about the lessons. Drawback, just look at look at the legacies left, right? I mean, uh, all his wordings or all the lines that he has spoken in these many years. In, the, in fact, even in this last interview, he was so bullish about India, the fact that you know this is India's decade. Now people are talking about it, this is India's decade. But he was at least three, four years ahead of his times. Even in terms of his investment, he was so much ahead of everybody else, right? I mean, as I, as I pointed as well, Tata Motors is a classic example. Mm. You know, there are there are times when I'd gone and asked him as to why you like this company. There is so much of debt, so much of international pressures as well. And he said, Nimesh, dekhna ye stock kaise turn out, turn around hoga. Yeah. And he's actually, these are the words, right? Now, there is a massive turnaround which is visible in Tata Motors. You know, Nimesh, and there's something about it, something about the timing as well. I mean, he left us on the 14th of August. Tomorrow we celebrate the 15th. And I, from what I can recall, if there has been one hugely bullish voice in the you know, medium to long term on the story of India, yeah. the investment call India, it was Rakesh and Thank, Thank you so you. much for uh, you know, jogging our memory, as Rima said, on all the holdings that he has. Uh, Gurmeet, uh, so, you know, there you have uh, Nimesh kind of uh, uh, may us remember the portfolio all over again, Big Bull's portfolio. If you were to look at some of the holdings that he still has, I'm not going to get into Titan. I mean, that's that's been widely debated and discussed. But some of the other stocks, some of the other Tata Group stocks, Indian hotels, I mean, it shot and how, shot up and how the last 12 months. Um, you know, which are the ones that you like and maybe personally that you also have a strong conviction on? Uh, I think one one thing he was he was excellent at is spotting turnaround stories, uh, you know. And and one learning from him is that uh, if you stay bullish long enough, you you make a photo. One or two stocks are enough to make a fortune. And I for him, I think it was largely Titan and Pacific. In fact, one of my colleagues Aditya has co-authored a book on him. Uh, so we continue to you know live his legacy. Uh, I think but, but we got lucky with Tata Motors. I think that's when we he started investing both Tata Motors and and Indian hotels. Uh, I think it was a, a bit of a turnaround thing which he spotted. Uh, Tata Motors now, in fact, I remember a few fund managers who met him. Uh, he used to be very regular uh, in one of the very famous outlets in Marine Drive, and used to say that this would be India's Tesla. You know, at, at, at you know one of the candid moments. And I think look at look at how it's turned around from two digits to. In fact, it's, it will generate free cash flows this year. Uh, EVs they are almost already have a pipeline of one lakh units. JLR great turnaround again. And even the commercial vehicle segment seems to be picking up. So it's 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 one of the uh, one of the things we benefited from from his wisdom. And and I think one one of his quote I still remember Surbi, is uh, respect markets, uh, don't try to time it too much, and, and change your view if 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 things don't go right. I think that that's that's one of the, that's one of few lines who, where, you know which has stayed with me uh, uh, for a very very long time. Or as he said, uh, uh, as he once said, Shivaji nahi banna. So, huh? Shivaji nahi banne ka. This is his way of, I mean, unique way. And you said in one of his candid moments, I'll tell you this, uh, Gurmeet, it was always candid, yeah. candid with, uh, uh, you know, Rakesh. Never really minced words or held back what he wanted to say, how he wanted to say it. So I think that's why uh, all the more respect. Uh, that people have uh, for him. We'll take a very quick break here. We'll come back and uh, our alpha manager of the day also will be with us. Sanjay, uh, Sanjay Parikh of Soham Asset Managers joins us in just a bit. Stay with us.
Welcome back. By the way, the dollar index has eased just a little bit. It was it had crossed 103 in the morning, and now it's down to 102.88. So if you have the dollar index, uh, you know, level, you would see that it's just pulled back a tad bit, 102.8 now. Uh, so versus 103 that it was in the morning, and I think that's helping that intraday pull back. But one section of the market which is doing very well are the defense names. So earlier today we had a chat, a chat with Garden Reach Shipbuilders. They reported a good set of numbers in the quarter gone by. Their margins have expanded sequentially and on a year-on-year -year basis. The other income has aided the profitability as well. P. R. Hari, the chairman and managing director of Garden Reach Builders and Engineers, spoke to us earlier today, and he's very confident that the company's growth rates will sustain. Uh, the peak revenues for the company will be in FI25, FI26. Listen in. Uh, during this quarter, uh, while we have executed, uh, as you have seen, around uh, 750 crores, we also got a, a 250 crore order uh, from the Indian Navy for manufacture of uh, 30 mm naval uh, standard guns. Uh, so this is what has added and stabilized our order book. Now we are expecting from the Indian Coast Guard, we all already submitted our bids. Three projects, uh, the bid is, I mean, the L1 is likely to be declared in a couple of months. So this total value comes to almost uh, uh, 4,000 crores. So our overall target would be to maintain plus 24,000 crores at the end of the current financial year. I had mentioned that the peak uh, revenue generating years will be uh, 20, FI 24, 25, and 26, bang on, and we are right on the target. As you can, it is very evident that uh, in uh, FI 23, our uh, revenue from operations were 2561. In the first quarter, Q1 of 24, we already touched 756 crores. We expect the peak revenue in uh, 24, 25. That's uh, the management of Garden Reach Builders. Very strong order booking. Order inflows have been strong in the quarter gone by. The company looks confident about execution. Could be there's only one bit of worry. The, you know, analysts are wondering that the current order book may run off, um, you know, by FI26. What happens thereafter? Uh, are we going to continue to see the kind of order wins, order booking that we've had over the last 12 months? Will that sustain over a longer period of time? So your thoughts on that and amongst the rest of in the entire defense basket, which one would you pick? Uh, no, you're absolutely right. I think uh, people uh, don't understand the, the defense order book as correctly. You know, it's, it's long gestated. There are various payment milestones and, and the business is extremely, extremely lumpy and and I think a lot of anticipation, a lot of defense stocks have gone up. Some of the PUC names now trade at 30, 40 times, uh, you know, earning multiples. So got to be a little careful. Uh, market obviously has few darling sectors. Uh, it, there was pharma and specialty chemicals in 21. Uh, there was IT in 2022. And we all know what happens when, when, when you know, there is a consensus euphoria around something. Uh, we like this one, one stock we've been very steady and invested since 2017 almost is solar. It's a nice mix of explosive and defense. Uh, explosives is a quasi manufacturing and power play. Uh, Coal India is one of their largest uh, clients and some of the other miners. And the defense book is now almost at 10%. Uh, the stock uh, made 4,500 and then corrected almost 20%. Uh, and now again, I think that, you know, it's, it's good guidance. Uh, you know, the operating margins are continuously improving. Uh, they're guiding for 20% kind of margins. And they have a big uh, Pinaka rocket uh, order book also, which is due. Uh, so that will take the defense order book, uh, you know, upwards of 3,000 crores. So that's something we 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 have been invested for long. Uh, we partially booked out of, uh, uh, you know, HAL. Uh, but as I said, the, the space looks, uh, uh, you know, on valuation-wise, it looks quite expensive. In fact, some of the defense funds, uh, even in mutual fund, have stopped uh, uh, lump sum subscription in this space. All right. Hi, Gurmeet. Good afternoon. Uh, Gurmeet, you briefly mentioned IT as well in there. You know, a couple of these earnings were quite disappointing. Case in point being Tech Mahindra. It has valuation comfort, but the street clearly is looking ahead. How do you all play this IT theme? So, so Nile, there is, there is uh, some bit of negative news in the price. Tech Mahindra, when it uh, came to three digit, uh, was what, 12, 13 times. I think well, the market is probably betting on the leadership change with Mohit coming over. There's a new CEO also, which is coming from Infosys. Uh, Mohit has been a BFSI veteran. So I think markets is betting on that. Also, I think that uh, you will see now, uh, I think if some whatever little feedback we get from some of our clients and, and, and CTOs whom we engage is that some some bit of uh, large deals may happen. So we saw HCL uh, getting almost a $2 billion uh, 
deal from Verizon, uh, you know, a few weeks back. Today we saw TCS cracking a deal uh, 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 with Lexmark on, on cloud and enterprise. So I think uh, one is the disruption part of AI, second is the business application part of it. So I think there'll be some differentiation, uh, you know, uh, which will happen selectively. And we have seen, for example, uh, some of the niche ERD names like KPIT uh, and others doing very well, despite we had, you know, whatever headwinds we have had. And in some pockets in large cap, there is some valuation comfort. So if you have an ability to take some pain for a quarter or two, I think from a risk reward basis, this sector looks very, very good. So in large cap, we, we like HCL, Infi, uh, uh, and Tech Mahindra. Uh, in mid cap, we, uh, we look at, we have uh, persisted. Uh, as well as uh, you know, KPIT and Tata Lexi. So that's that's our universe in this space, uh, and we are open to look at you know new opportunities which will come. But uh, for the near term, there could be there could be some pain. Okay, got that. Gurmeet, uh, good talking to you as always. Thank you very much for uh, joining in. Uh, you enjoy your uh, midweek holiday and uh, have a fantastic Independence Day. Thanks for joining in today. Thanks, Gurmeet. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Well, the market has managed to put on some more green on the screen. There's about 21 points up on the board on the Nifty right now. Uh, recovery on a couple of names. ITC is helping this move. <coughs> ICICI Bank is uh, helping the bulls cause today. So is Axis, some of these blue chip banking names. There's Lever. It was a sharp uh, sort of uptick on ITC that we're noticing right now. Divis is now uh, picking up momentum after its numbers. And there's about a half percent gain on Divis. Again, bulk of it has happened in the last 15, 20 minutes. So these are some of the stocks that are uh, keeping the flag uh, flying high for the bulls, at least trying to uh, at this point in time. Sanjay Parekh, founder and chief investment officer at Soho Asset Managers, is with us on the show today. Sanjay, thank you very much for joining in. Welcome to the show. So you tell us. I mean, first of all, let's get your uh, sense on... You know, headline things like uh, valuations, because the market rally, which was quite ferocious up until, I guess, uh, you know, early July, uh, that's kind of now started stalling. We haven't fallen too much, barely 3% from the top, but it is getting a little sluggish. Uh, so what do you think of the overall construct, the earnings, quality of earnings, uh, valuations, and just sheer money flow? Yeah, uh, I should be. So basically, your earnings clearly are, uh, you know, not cheap. If we take earnings on FT at uh, 950 to 960 rupees for 24, uh, and then move to 25, which would be ranging from 1070 to 1100. Uh, on 24, we are at 20 times plus, which is not cheap for our interest rates. And uh, clearly we have to look at 25. And on 25 for our interest rates, uh, uh, you know, uh, if we give, 20 times on India's earnings for the character of the, you know, uh, overall character of the market is, um, then there is clearly upside. But, uh, you know, we certainly in equity, you need at least 12, 13% return as a cost of equity. So what we believe is there is some time correction which is possible as we transit to 25 and there could be some time price correction as well. But uh, structurally, we are very, very positive and we believe that you know there could be a three to five percent downside, uh, and that would be a very very good level to enter. And in the interim, you could look for stocks which gives you great opportunities to buy. That's our strategy as well. Hi Sanjay, good afternoon. Thanks so much for speaking to us here on CNBC TV. And it's been a while since we spoke, and good to see from the time you have launched this fund, you have outbeaten actually what the index has done, the Nifty. And the better part is actually that valuation-wise, your portfolio is cheaper than what the Nifty is trading at. So good on you. But the point is, from year on, where do the opportunities lie? You know, you have, uh, you're fairly spread out in terms of opportunities. So I'm looking at some of those stocks that you have in your portfolio. Tell us about the way you'll allocate money first between large and mid-caps. As of now, you're still pretty much large-cap heavy, right? Right. So, uh, you know, the last framework is that, uh, you know, always we would have at least 70% into large cap. And uh, we move into mid and small cap if the threshold of returns is significantly higher. And internally, broadly, we have the way we talk about it is can it double in three years, if not at least in four years. Otherwise, we we'll be into large cap. That over cycles that I've managed earlier, funds at Nippon or or you know, even ICICI, that has been the framework I've been following and it helps. So here as well, uh, you know, uh, we have more like uh, 32 names of which 18 are nifty companies, another three are large caps. 
and then the rest of them are building small cap stocks. So uh, uh, for we are hardcore garb investors. Uh, you rightly said, you know, our price earning of our portfolio is 14.5 times on 25. Our growth is 22% and our ROE is higher than Nifty. So uh, that is exactly what we follow uh, growth at reasonable price for the portfolio as a whole. Uh, but we clearly love growth, uh, but, you know, we want to buy them at reasonable price. So within mid cap, small cap, the strategy is that, you know, uh, look for, uh, you know, where the size, critical mass is there. They can move up to the next scale. Uh, we're comfort on promoters. The size of opportunity is large. And the most important is they should double in at least four years. Uh, and a lot of them, you know, you've seen in our portfolios on the digital space or, uh, you know, all around in, in, in microfinance. Uh, we do get opportunities like that. And, um, uh, you know, that's what we seek for. But we don't chase momentum. We look for the right entry point, uh, uh, you know, when we are buying mid and small cap and have, don't break that discipline of uh, having the threshold of return that we seek. So that's a built-in risk mechanism we have in our framework. And yet, you know, with less risk also, you, we've got alpha, uh, you know, as it's demonstrated in our 14 months performance. Uh, Sanjay, afternoon. Uh, Rima here. Just to get a little stock specific, Jupiter Wagons is one of your bets. And the stock has done phenomenally well. In the last one year, it's up more than 300%. Whenever we think of railway wagons, we typically, our mind typically gravitates towards Titagad wagons. Now, Jupiter wagons has had a name change, so that's also adding to that confusion. But take us through the thesis here. Why did you bet on Jupiter wagons, and how long will you let it run, your investment, considering the kind of returns it's already given? Yeah, so we bought this in our QIP, which was 103, 104 rupees, I think, four months back. Um, uh, the, the overall size of opportunity was clearly larger. The number of players who have this capacity was lower than the demand. And the demand would far outstrip uh, the supply. Clearly, we could see that. Uh, this company uh, has Setra Wagon as a joint venture partner, which is a European major. Uh, the domestic pro promoters own 52%. The Tetra Wagon owns 20%. And uh, they are also moving ahead in terms of JVs in the railway segment further uh, in certain uh, you know, components required in the railway segment. So clearly that was an opportunity which was pretty large. The growth in terms of EBITDA, they expect uh, we, we bought at a market cap of 4,000 crores. Uh, they would do 425 to 450 crores this year, move up to 550 to 600 crores next year. Very, very strong order book. Very efficient in terms of margins, very disciplined, not having major debt. And the entire expansion plan in the next three years would be purely from internal approvals. So that's the that's where we bought in. And uh, of course, it's gone quite fast, but we like this stock for longer term. Hmm. <clears throat> no, that's uh, well put. Uh, Sanjay, hi. You said you don't want to chase momentum, but uh, sometimes momentum chases you, right? Uh, Jupiter is a case in point, uh, as you said, 104 to what, 250, 260 in a few months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll be very honest, Prashant. We have a very strict discipline of fair value that we put for 24 yeah. and 25. Yeah. And our fair value for 25 was coming at 250, which has happened in four months. <laughs> so it does happen, you know, markets sometimes move too fast. And that's where the discipline comes off, even if at times you want to book profits hold partially, and that's what we do very, very objectively uh, in a detached manner. We have our assessment of value, and then, you know, we just, uh, once our value assessment is done, then we act based on that value that we are arrived at. Using this as an example, because, you know, you know buying uh, someone is hard, but selling is sometimes uh, considered an even harder skill in that sense. I mean, so what do you do? You thought you'd yeah, get, a, get, a, get this price in two years, you get it in four months? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, books, uh, I'll be very honest, we book okay. uh, profit in this as well. And uh, it has happened in a lot of small and mid cap. So, one is holding secularly for long term. And secondly, you know, when things happen so fast, markets are little, you know, the whole psychology, you know, a small cap, uh, the overall flows are pretty large. 
and the demand, I mean, the good stocks demand in terms of supply is limited. You could see that. And hence, uh, uh, you know, at times, if it's so fast, uh, we certainly would book profit. So we don't churn aggressively, but, uh, you know, we do have a discipline of profit booking if it's, it's if it moves, anything moves so fast, you know. That's the way we, as I said, you know, we simply have our assessment of value. Uh, and uh, while assessing that value, uh, we do look at potential upsides. Uh, there could be some deviations, but if there is far exceed in the stock prices, far exceed value, we book profits. Okay, all right. Uh, Sanjay, thanks so much for stopping by. Wishing you all the best, and we look forward to having a chat with you in the coming weeks. For the time being, congratulations on the outperformance that you've seen on your portfolio. Well, when we're having that chat with Sanjay, actually just take a look at what the markets have done. The Nifty has moved up close to around 30 points, so that would be a good recovery. I think it's uh, close to around a 200-point recovery, I think, from the day's low. It's a 200-point recovery. Bang on. 200 points recovery on the Nifty. But the Nifty Bank is up close to 450 points from the day's low. So I think if you just get both those two intraday charts up of the Nifty and the Nifty Bank, we'll tell you a clearer picture about the kind of recovery that we've seen. The Nifty Bank has been the sore pocket. That's recovered from the day's low. And that's what's helped the Nifty as well to move into the green. But as always, it's uh, 3 p.m. So time to turn our attention to our special segment, D Street Chatter. Nimesh is with us. Nimesh, what are you picking up today? I don't know how many people are at their desk actually domestically. But uh, what are the flows which are like? Well, the presence is uh, obviously on the lower side. So you know, that clearly shows off in the volumes as well. But uh, look at the intraday recovery in the markets today. I think it's largely led by large cap. And within large cap, it's the Reliance, which has been a big, big contributor as well. As far as the Nifty is concerned, of course, the bank Nifty has also recovered mm -hmm. uh, slightly from the intraday lows. But in terms of flows, uh, the sense I'm getting is there is still some bit of selling pressure from the larger FIs. I just want to add a line on the, on the flows. If you look at for the last 10, 12 days, uh, there is a consistent sell flow from the larger FIs. I was talking to some large, uh, you know, uh, global uh, experts as well. And the general feedback is there is a uh, redemption uh, for an for a India-dated ETF. Mm. It's not that the India-dated funds are seeing uh, redemptions, but there is one particular ETF which is having a redemption for the last many days. And then you're seeing uh, on an average 100 million of selling from that ETF in the last many days. So that, that actually explains the net FI sell figure in the cash market for the last many days from the larger FI. So that's the overall feedback as far as flows are concerned. Uh, within sectors, metals under under pressure today because of the China news. And that's spooked a bit uh, of the investor sentiment as well. But the PSUs is where uh, the momentum continues. Again, in today's state, a lot of PSUs which are, which are relatively outperforming. And that's one space which is well bid by the larger institutions as well. So net-net, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the domestic presence is on the lower side. Uh, I explained the reason why the FI flows has been negative. But broadly, it looks like today's recovery is led by one large name, which is Reliance Industries. All right, you know, Namesh, the presence is on the lower side at the desk, which is good. The better news is on our way home, the presence is lower even on the road. So hopefully we get clearer roads to reach home. But tell us some individual stocks. What are you picking up? So in terms of individual names, the first stock on my list is Z Entertainment. After the NCLT approval, there are first signs of now long only FIs turning active buyers on Z Entertainment. And that explains in the today's volume as well. So that's the first one. The second stock is Kesanam Industries. Uh, under pressure in today's trade, but uh, the uh, H&A activity is quite active. Is what I understand in Kesaram Industries, and there is a there is a wide anticipation that maybe uh, the uh, the fundraising in this company will come very soon. So that's Kesaram Industries, and the third stock is Godrej Properties. Within the real estate name, this is one stock which has outperformed in the last uh, in the last one quarter, so to speak. But even today, said good volumes up in trade, and largely in back of uh, strong FIF flows. So this is one stock within the real estate which is well bid by the larger FIs. Okay, Nimesh, all right, got that. Thank you very much uh, for giving us all the buzz and the chatter as uh, usual. We'll take a break on that note. On the other side, we will come back and get you some uh, final trading calls as well and uh, more on the markets.
Okay, welcome back. Uh, we've got, what, uh, eight-point uh, change higher on the index. I mean, if you did not look at markets all day long and just woke up and looked at markets now, you'd seem it's a flat day. But that's, the, that's today's chart, and that clearly shows you uh, what kind of a day it has been. You know, uh, down significantly early on, and then a very sharp recovery, steady recovery through the course of the day. Midesh is with us to tell us what to buy or sell today for a reverse trade day after. Midesh, uh, afternoon. It's a uh, it, it's, it's not a it's not a sudden turn. It's been a turn since the morning after the lows early on. What would you do? What fresh trades? Yeah, so, Prashant, as I said, I think you know this will not be a downtrending market. It basically is a correction, and now I think you know we'll go through some kind of consolidation, assuming that this is over. In case we go back to those levels, I think I still believe that nineteen thousand two hundred will hold. So we we maintain our view that you know maybe. The good part of declining part of this consolidation is over. Now we can we can just chop around for some time. On the stock side, uh, Godrej Consumer is something which has come on the uh, list. I think uh, that's reversed very well in the last uh, one and a half, two hours. So that's a BTST. Keep a stop at 1,025. Uh, look for targets of around 1,055. And on the negative side is Pebbles, which I would suggest to taking an STBT call with a stop at 1,285 for targets of 1,260. Okay, all right, Mitesh, uh, thanks a lot uh, for that. By the way, from the broader markets, a couple of stocks are moving quite well. I think Amy Organics, that's one of the only ones uh, from this uh, chemical space that has been doing quite well. That's one of the few stocks that haven't cracked as of now. It's currently at the high point of the day. So Amy Organics is one stock that we should be looking at uh, as we speak. Interday chart comes up for you. But the Divi's Laboratory, that's the big number that came out around 90 minutes or so ago. And on the top line, it was a little lower than what the street was working with. But what the street liked was the margin beat. Ekta joins us. She's been on the con call. She's joining in to give us the key takeaways. Ekta? Thanks for that. Well, yes, it was definitely a margin improvement which has come in for Divi's this quarter, 28%. So it's really offset that disappointment which has come through in terms of the revenue as well as the profit. Now, the management commentary also seemed to be quite optimistic. They have indicated that they remain optimistic on opportunities emerging. They anticipate multiple growth prospects in the next two to three years from different segments. Now, in terms of one of their key segments, which is custom synthesis, the segment is doing well. They are seeing opportunities emerge uh, in the contrast media segment as well and opportunities from Big Pharma. Now, in terms of the raw materials, that has showed a downward trend and they expect further softening going forward. They also indicated that they've reduced reliance when it comes to China in terms of procurement. They can retain their margins when it comes to custom synthesis and, in fact, price uh, pressure has seen some stabilization in the U.S. markets. Remember, that is a that was a pain point for Divi's last quarter, but now they've indicated, like other generic companies, that there has been some stabilization in the U.S. Overall, they are seeing an improvement in terms of margins and growth going forward, and they have indicated that they do have opportunities coming in from Big Pharma. They are working on some projects on that front too. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Ikta. Well, let's go across to Anand Tandon then, who joins us on the show. Hi, Anand. Uh, wanted your view on the Beast Laboratory. Dream stock. You know, they had a couple of off quarters, but the stock price has recovered and the performance as well has improved. Your take on it? Well, I think it's in a market where, where it has certain unique abilities in terms of being able to provide inputs to many of the uh, uh, discovering companies and as a consequence you know the margins will recover over a period of time again uh, i think for anyone looking at it on a long term basis uh, a drop in uh, price is actually a good value but the only question is you will have to have the patience to sit through it in the near term uh, you know i think it looks like it has uh, probably hit the uh, worst phase and is looking at moving up from here Okay, all right. Uh, that is the word on Divi's. Uh, the uh, uh, the other stock that's been a, quite a mover is, of course, uh, ITC, which is coming out with results as well. And then there's Lever, which has uh, worked well for the bulls. By the way, the market's are now losing some momentum again. We're just about four points up. So it's a little choppy. And let's see if we can actually go home with those gains or not. Uh, on uh, on a stock like ITC, what's the sense from here on, Anand? It's had a great run, and now we know the demerger of the... Hotels business is finally happening, but what next from here at 450 odd? Would you be a buyer? Well, it, still, it still continues to remain among the cheaper FMCG stocks, and uh, you know I would still hope, though there has been no announcement, 
that at some stage they will also move out the rest of the FMCG portfolio and list it separately, in which case you know you will have another phase of value unlocking. But even if that were not to happen for the moment right now, while it, as you mentioned, it has a great run and therefore is likely to pause for a while, I would suspect that the earnings profile of this company will remain more robust than many of the other FMCG companies given the kind of uh, inflationary environment that one has been operating in. And from that perspective, as a part of your portfolio, I think it still holds a place. Okay, ITC holds a place as a part of the portfolio. It's amongst the cheaper NBFC names. Um, you know, wanted to get your views in on uh, PVR, Inox, Anand. But before that, let's go over the news. The stock has surged close to about 5% after it witnessed its highest ever daily admissions over the weekend as moviegoers flocked to watch the new releases, which include Sunny Deol Starer, Gadar 2, Akshay Kumar's OMG 2, and the latest Rajni Khan film, Jailer, resulting in a gross box office collection of more than 100 crore rupees just over the weekend. Surbhi is joining in with more details. Surbhi. Thanks so much for uh, that. So as you said, PBR did witness its highest ever daily and weekend admissions. Now in the weekend itself, they had 33.6 lakh um, you know, customers and earned a, a box office revenue of over 100 crores. Yesterday itself, they had a 12.8 lakh customers with over uh, close to 40 crores of box office collections. Uh, you mentioned three movie releases. In the weekend itself, their gross box office collections was over 300 crores. Out of the three, two movies, Gadda 2 and Jailer, both saw uh, gross box office collections of over 100 crores. Uh, in July, they had three big releases, Rocky Arani, Oppenheimer and Barbie. Again, out of the three big releases, two of them saw over 100 crores of collections. Um, you know, so July and August both have seen 300 crores worth of collections. There are 16 movies lined up in Q2 of FI24 itself and five out of those 16 movies have already done well. Uh, so it seems like occupancy is coming back in a big way. In Q4 and Q1, their occupancy levels were close to 22 uh, odd percent. But Q1 of last year, the occupancy were levels were of 31 percent. So with the uh, movies coming back, it seems like the occupancy can go back to the previous levels that they've seen uh, that is over 30 percent thank you very much for that anand pvr has gone through a very long patch where the movies just didn't fire south indian movies did well but you know your traditional bollywood movies weren't appealing uh, to the audiences but now for the last one month or we've got so many hits right uh, surbhi was just highlighting them um do you think the fortunes of pvr inox are turning uh, would you bet on this tactically or structurally well, you know, from a point of view, the fact that it's almost a monopolistic position in the exhibition space, you know, you may want to look at it. But otherwise, I find it a bit of a challenge for it to re uh, reach anywhere close to its earlier uh, occupancy on a consistent basis. I think more and more movies are now getting released on OTT platforms directly and with good reason because the revenues there are a little more, uh, uh, you know, are directly uh, predictable kind of. and. I think there is now a definite and abiding shift that has happened. So it's not as if movie going into uh, halls is going to be the only way you are going to consume content. You look at what's happening in the rest of the world, companies like Disney and so on. Uh, you know, I think there is a shift that's happening in media dramatically, uh, which will mean that the traditional modes will have to take a bit of a backseat, uh, given the fact that it is... Uh, you know, the it's coming off from a low, relatively low base as far as the pricing is concerned. I think it may still have some place to go, but I would be a little suspect buying it at, at higher prices. Okay, well, uh, uh, got that. Uh, thanks uh, for that, Anand. Stay with us. We're just taking a quick commercial break here uh, with absolutely flat indices. Uh, lots of movers, by the way. Uh, we'll come back and address uh, some of them. Uh, on the downside, really, markets have recovered, but market breadth has not. It's still uh, firmly in favour of what is lower. Uh, so more on that. Anand stays on. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Well, the market's more or less flattish uh, as we speak. But let's discuss a couple of more stocks with Anand. Anand, you know, the metal stocks are under pressure. In fact, JSPL's numbers are quite good. But clearly, the street is getting a little bit spooked with what's going on in China. However, NMBC is doing well. That's the outperforming metal stock today. Your view on it? Well, I think you can still probably add that to the portfolio. I think there is still some uh, steam left in that uh, in terms of earnings as well as in terms of valuations. It's not that expensive. For JSPL2, I think there may be some upside if you don't assume that there is a dramatic change in terms of the final prices of uh, their product. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> got it, got it. By the way, uh, I don't know if you have, uh, I think we've discussed defense earlier as well. Uh, with uh, you, Anand. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's almost stop start and the stop is very brief, but when they run, they continue to run for weeks on end. And today is one more day where we're seeing all these stocks uh, doing very well. We had the management of Garden Reach with us earlier today. We played out a soundbite as well. Uh, it's 13, 13 and a half percent uh, gains uh, on uh, something like a Garden Reach. Shipbuilders, by the way, that's the part of the market which is doing very well. Do you own any of them? Uh, have you looked at uh, this in detail. So, you know, the management actually left us with a very large number. They said over the next three to five years, from the Navy and Coast Guard, the order booking would be, uh, the orders which, are, which, that, which is expected to come in is about one lakh crores. And the sort of players who perhaps will be able to get a pie of it are six, six in total. Uh, you know, one private player and uh, five government companies. Uh, any thoughts, uh, Anand? So, uh, yes, Prashant, I have looked at the space and, uh, you know, the challenge earlier was always the question of how much order flow they can get because at the end of the day, it's a single uh, user market. I mean, you don't, uh, typically many of these platforms are not exportable un unless uh, through government approval. Uh, you know, you cannot be selling a ship to someone who the government doesn't like. On the other hand, you are pretty much dependent on the government helping you to export. So other than the government, there is only other one other mode which is to export if the government also participates and a foreign power decides to buy from India. On ships, we have seen some of that in some of our neighboring countries. Uh, and probably shipping probably therefore has one of the most stable learning profiles given the fact that A, the uh, level of uh, indigenization for most of, of the three services is the highest in the case of the Navy. So, you know, they are the ones who import the least uh, compared to, let's say, the Air Force, which imports the most, and the Army. So, net-net, uh, you know, shipbuilding is a reasonable place to be. Uh, but again, the challenge always has been that, you know, unless you have a longer-term view, let's say the next three years, or let's say even the next five years, you will see an earnings growth. And after that, there is a good potential that will drop off. Uh, because of the fact, as I said, you're not going to keep on buying more submarines and more frigates uh, continuously forever. So you will have to find new market for it. So uh, valuation aside, by and large, I think the fact that uh, most of the defense companies get paid, especially the shipping ones, get paid in advance also helps. Near term, I don't see a major challenge. I think, uh, you know, if you have to be in the defense area, probably shipping, uh, shipbuilders is uh, among the safest places to be. HAL2 has a great order book, but their execution always sucks. Mm, okay. Uh, so, finally, uh, let's end by talking about some of the newer age companies. We've spoken about some of the industrial companies, some of the defense companies, Anand. This was a quarter that was marked by improved performance for some companies. For instance, uh, Zomato, even Paytm has been showing better profitability, attraction. But look at how Nika has been punished today just because the revenues are fine. But I think their, their profitability year on year kind of contracted a little bit. Maybe it's just a you know one quarter seasonality. But uh, your thoughts on this space and whether any of these stocks, any of these companies are making the cut for you now as they try and get a little more clear and strict with profits. So, so Ruby, the challenge has been how do you manage valuation versus growth, right? If you try and grow very, far, grow very fast, it automatically results in a negative bottom line for most of these companies. And if you don't grow fast, then you can't justify the valuation you're trading at. So net-net as these, uh, so, you know, it's a fine balancing act. I think something like Paytm, for example, has at least found a niche where the, their pay, payment systems, etc., are doing reasonably well. And since their client acquisition remains very strong, uh, there is, over a period of time, a path to profitability that looks to be established. That said, once it is profitable and you start comparing it with some of the other companies in the same, in the, let's say, the lending space, you will find that they are very expensive and uh, the growth will have to taper off at that stage. So I would argue that, you know, from a retail investor's perspective, companies which are funded by PEs, 
should best be avoided because they will take the most of the upside from away from you at the time of the I, before the ipo and the ipo comes at obnoxious prices case in point of course which is 10 years old but which continues which has recently filed for bankruptcy is weworks uh, you know, it was a company which had already gone down the tube, but now it is a comp uh, even something like SoftBank, which put in more than a $10 billion investment, is now looking at, you know, cents to the dollar in terms of whatever they can recover, if at all. And uh, the company doesn't look like it may last for very long. So, E-funded companies, which are especially which have very strong growth because of the amount of money that they've got uh, in, the, in the kitty, are best avoided till they settle down and start showing profits, at which point of time you can take a view on it. Interesting thoughts there, Anand. Thank you very much uh, for joining in. Enjoy um, your holiday tomorrow and wish you a happy Independence Day. You know, I just want to once again get back to ITC because they will be reporting their numbers. We had a chat with Anand about ITC. But let's find out what the numbers are likely to be. Mangalam joins in with the key expectations. Mangalam. Well, for IDC, a lot of the triggers have already played out. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how the stock's reaction post the numbers would be, irrespective of the numbers. Uh, what is it that uh, the street is anticipating this time around? Well, it's an operationally strong quarter that the street is working with. 7% uh, to 8% growth in their cigarette volumes. That would actually be inferred by about 10% growth in the cigarette revenues. The second thing you're watching out for, FMCG business growth continues. So, uh, you know, that's now on an autopilot with good growth coming in, good margins as well, 20 to 15% growth out there. Hotel business, uh, you know, we have have seen uh, the run in hotel uh, uh, revenues continue so 30 to 40 percent jump is what we're expecting out there because of less trading opportunities and uh, the regulations you know exporting or banning export of wheat we're expecting a decline in their agri trading revenues and paper as well on a high base is likely to see five to ten percent revenue decline the most important thing apart from the numbers to track will be uh, any further details coming in on the hotel business demerger my sense is that it will be the swap ratio which will be announced today as well put all these things together, what are you working with? Absolutely flat uh, numbers on the top line, 17,300 odd crores. The EBITDA grows around 13%. That means a margin expansion from 32.5% all the way up to 37%. And the net profit for ITC this time around grows around 15%. Okay. Oh. All right. Manglam got that. Thanks very much for uh, bringing us up to speed and prepping us on the numbers. That's ITC. Uh, it'll be out post-market hours. Well, we're down to the last one or two minutes of trade, so let's start wrapping things up. Well, the end will be negative once again. The bulls couldn't hold on to that little bit of green 20, 30-point rally that we had on the Nifty. Uh, finally, going home with a cutoff anywhere between five to six-odd points. Uh, the weakness, well, definitely global-facing sectors like metals, so JSW Steel, Hindalco, Tata Steel, all of these stocks are down. Some of the Adani group, the larger Adani group, Nifty names like Adani Enterprises and Ports also weak. Remember, the news development is that SEBI has asked for two more weeks of time to submit its report before the uh, apex court. Uh, other than that, we have some more weak names in the form of Fisham Motors, Tata Motors. These are uh, weak on the auto side. In financials, Bajaj Finance, Innocent Bank, HDFC Bank, uh, a lot of the, the banking names weak. In fact, the bank nifty is what led the last leg of the decline. The reason why we couldn't manage that positive close is because look at the bank nifty. It's going home with a cutoff. Uh, almost 0.3.4 percent. IT uh, was trying to do a little bit of the firefighting. Uh, Infosys up uh, about one and a half percent. Reliance and Lever, uh, along with an ICICI bank, but I guess uh, Rima not quite enough because uh, you know the net result is flat with mild negative buys. The net result is flat, but the story, the full day story, is that we managed to pull back quite a bit from yeah. the session's low. Uh, the session low was closer to 19,250 and we're closing perhaps above the 19,400 mark. Devi's laboratory has also been a big mover on the back of the margin expansion. Uh, the mid-cap index is closing in the red, uh, a cut of about a quarter of a percent. The advanced decline ratio is firmly in favor of the stocks which are losing in trade. We've got about 1,000 stocks advancing to about 1,800, 1,900 stocks under pressure. PVR, INOX, NMDC, uh, these are some stocks which, uh, you know, gain in trade. Garden Reach, Ship Builders, NMDC, IRFC, HEG. These are all earnings reaction which were rewarded by the sh rewarded um, today. And on the losing side, Nika uh, takes uh, a big fall of 8.5%. Weakness in JSPL, ABB, Nalco, Krishna Diagnostic. Again, these are all earnings reaction. And, uh, by the way, the earnings season is over. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is uh, absolutely. But, you know, all in all, a, a pretty good session, all told, because uh, it was looking like it's going to be a 100, 100 plus point 
cut like Friday, we were down 150 and we end with just 15 points uh, sort of red. So 19,400 plus is where we've uh, ended with all that happened in today's session. Uh, well, that's a wrap in this edition of Closing Bell. Enjoy your holiday tomorrow. But uh, don't go anywhere for now. We are uh, coming right back with more on markets on our Independence Day special. Devina Mera, founder, chairperson and managing director at First Global and Sridhi Paracharya of Edelweiss Asset Management join in on the other side. Stay tuned.